So in the last video, I just ran the command docker compose up dash D, which started my containers and the dash D flag just put them in the background instead of the foreground of my terminal here. And then I was able to go to the browser and hit localhost and see that I have an application up and running, which is actually being powered by the Docker containers that I just started. What we want to do is start building a Docker container that we can use to run a PHP application, just like we have running here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to basically use this for notes that I've made ahead of time. I'm going to go to a new project that I have that's completely empty and we'll start from scratch to see how to build up to this. So over here, I'm just going to clear this out and I'm going to run docker image ls to list the docker images that I currently have on my computer, my local install of docker. So an image in docker is the thing that you run a command off of. So it's basically like a class in your coding language of choice. In this case, we'll be talking about PHP. So this is just like a PHP class. If you run a container from an image, it's just like instantiating a new class object from that class. So you might have class some object and in PHP, you can do something like V equals new some object. So the class itself is just like a Docker image and the instance of a class that you create is like a container, which is created based off of an image. So I could actually run a Docker command using the shipping Docker PHP app image, which is something we're going to build up to in a little bit. So I can do docker run and I have some flags here. Remove dash dash rm will destroy the container after I'm done running it. Dash d will push it to the background so it runs this container in the background. Dash v to share a directory. The current directory has another directory inside of it called application and I'm going to put that into the var dub dub html directory inside of the container. I'm going to share port 8080 here to port 80 inside of the container and then I'm just going to run an instance of shipping docker php app. Now I'll run over these commands again later so you can see that. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to run docker compose down to stop these containers that I have currently running. These are listening on port 80, not port 8080 like this specific container is. So if I head on over here, we'll see that port 80 is no longer working because I just did docker compose down, but I can go to port 8080 where that other container is that I spun up and I'll see that my Laravel app is up and running. So what I did is I grabbed the shipping docker PHP image and I ran a container from that. So you can see I have a running container whose ID is 314F2E, blah, blah, blah. And the image it's based off of is shipping docker PHP app. So in the next video, we are going to get started creating a brand new image, a updated version of shipping docker PHP app. So you can see what that process is like. So I'll stop this one in the meantime and then remove it to make sure it's gone. And actually it already will be because I did that r-rm flag. So when I stopped that container, it destroyed itself. And I'll test out my images one more time and we will actually delete them all. So I'm going to do docker remove. Well, I'll show you one thing. You can do docker image ls. So that's the same command we've just been doing. I can add the dash q flag to give me just the IDs of the docker images. I'm going to do docker image remove and I'm going to say remove all of my current images. So docker image ls dash q. This is a shortcut to remove all the images, so I no longer have any images on this instance of Docker. So we'll start from that blank slate, and in the next video, we'll start building a new image to run our applications with.